Hi everyone, my name is Julia if you're new here. Last week I did something pretty vulnerable and I posted documentation of my heartbreak, which was scary to say the least. And if you're going through a tough time or want to see how I've been going through it and healing, I provide some healing advice and tips for those going through a heartbreak in this video, which I'll link up here. Today I'm sharing a video about my trip to Cabo. I went to Cabo really spontaneously last minute and it's actually not like me because I'm a big planner, but I decided to do it because it was a month after my breakup and I really needed to like get back into the flow of things and travel is something very dear to my heart. I felt like I should go on another solo trip and I knew that this something I needed to do. For those that aren't subscribed, why aren't you subscribed? I don't know. I don't know. Hi! I always vlog at the worst moments because I look really ratchet and we just did hot yoga and... Well, you did. I just laid there. <laughs> no, you didn't! Stop saying that! <laughs> and then tomorrow, guess where I'm going? It's very crazy. It's very last minute. But yeah, I'm going to Cabo. Woo the Tijuana airport and I just went through Cross Border Express which is basically go on a bridge um, and get directly into the Tijuana airport without having to actually cross the border and wait in line in your car, you know, and like drive through the border. So it's nice. I stayed at this hostel called Mind Monkey and I am so glad I chose it. It was so nice and they had tons of activities and things to do. And I stayed in an all-female dorm, but I met tons of different people and I had so much fun at this hostel. This is Nova. I met her the very minute I arrived and she was so sweet and we immediately became friends. She lives kind of far away, but we still stayed in touch. This is Russell. I'm Russell from Arizona. Look at the boots. And I got some cowboy boots. He's very American. And we're going to the club. Heard a happy ending. This is great. The name is hilarious. Okay, I know what you're thinking. It, this looks like a typical spring break vlog, but as much as we did party, I also did some self-reflecting and adventuring and things like that. So don't worry, I didn't just drink the entire time. open bar, like unlimited drinks, and food, so slight. I mean, not unlimited food, but like, maybe. This was such a serendipitous moment. We just happened to see a mama and a baby whale or humpback whale while we were on the boat and we saw like multiple and it was just incredible. It's like 6.30 in the morning right now. And I got here a little early by accident. I'm not really a morning person, but for this kind of thing, I definitely am. Look at that sky. It does not look real. Here is the tour guide Mario showing us how to properly and safely swim with the whale sharks. Whale sharks are protected and you're not allowed to touch them, by the way. The bus ride was about two hours, but we stopped at an organic market along the way. And then this is where we got onto the boats. 
This is us on the boat going out to swim with the whale shark. I was so excited. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! So pretty! What? Okay, girls. These are the most majestic creatures ever. They are like 40 feet long and they are massive, but they are also just very calm and friendly creatures, just living their day to day, enjoying life. They are filter feeders, so they have tiny teeth and they only eat like small fish and plankton and they have no interest in you. They will not bite, don't worry. Afterwards, they took us to shore and we had a delicious lunch and I got to play with Lady the dog a little bit, but she did bite my hand. I'm okay. She was just a puppy and super playful and that's what happened. I only got ready. It took me like a hot minute. Oh no, she's so sunburned. Just maybe the lighting's bad. I don't know. This is Molly, by the way, so we're gonna hit the town and meet just the marina and get food. Bye! It was such a long day and I was exhausted, but it was so worth it. We made it back around 5 or 6 p.m. and I still had time to hang out and grab dinner with some friends from the hostel. We went to Solomon's Landing on the marina and the food was delicious. Oh my gosh. Marina. <laughs> yeah. And then go shop and then she's leaving in like a few hours and I'm sad. This is my least favorite part about solo travel because you always meet so many amazing people and then end up having to say goodbye. So it was really hard to say goodbye to Nova, but I know we will cross paths again someday. After Nova left, some of my other friends from the hostel invited me to go with them to Mango Deck, which is this beach club bar thing, and it's definitely crazy and hectic, but it was really fun, and we even managed to go swimming because it was right on the beach and it was a beautiful day. We're on our way to see the sunset um, at this resort beach area. This is crazy! So dangerous, be careful. The hostel even offered salsa dancing lessons. Everyone at the hostel basically joined in and learned how to salsa dance and I was terrible so I am not showing any clips of me dancing right now. But it was still really, really fun. Good times. We're last minute going to Lover's Beach and I literally have to get back in like an hour or less to catch my shuttle to the airport. So spontaneous adventures, here we go. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm really glad I did go on this trip because I feel like it was really helpful in my healing process. Maybe not the drinking part, but just being on my own and getting back into travel again. I'm about to board for Tijuana airport and then I'm gonna meet up with my friend Lana, but we're boarding now. I'm like, Mexico. I'm about to take off. Yeah, if you're considering going on a solo trip after you just went through a heartbreak, I honestly recommend have fun. Go on that trip. Go get it, girl. I'm sharing this because I want to encourage more people to go out there and take risks and face their fears and go on a solo trip, even if it's something that terrifies you. I don't want to encourage you to do things that are dangerous, but I want you to do things that are outside of your comfort zone. Because the first time I ever went on a solo trip, I literally think my life was changed forever. That's so cliche, but it is true. And a solo trip is an opportunity to be in your own feelings, be alone, feel it all, 
and be in a new place. And I think that's something that really helped me in my healing journey. One thing that's important to note is that when you're solo traveling, you're not necessarily alone. You can be if you want, but if you stay in a hostel, you tend to meet a lot of other people and honestly, you're never alone. There were times where I was alone and I wanted to be in my fields alone, but I was in a 10 person female dorm, so that wasn't always possible. And in fact, I was happy I wasn't alone because I met so many cool people and I am still friends with them right now. I'm excited to continue sharing my healing journey with you guys and I would love to hear in the comments below any of your feedback or advice on or things you'd like to see from me in the future let me know and don't forget to like and subscribe please okay my cat is right there <laughs> okay bye